Our first guest tonight is an actor, musician, raconteur, and probably 11 other things, too. His new animated film, They Shot the Piano Player, opens the theaters Friday in New York and L.A. Please welcome Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> Are you Thank feeling you so well? I'm you... feeling very well. Uh -huh. Thank you. Oh, there's a little echo here, isn't there? A little or bit. Yeah. Nice. Is that just my resonant voice? It's it it's seems acousticy. Yeah, there's you a little bit great. of an echo in the room. Yeah. So nice sure. to see see you. Nice to see you too. You know, I saw you from across the uh, stadium at the Super Bowl. Yes, sir. Um, I think this video went uh, viral, as a matter of fact. <laughs> what you do. I didn't know they were going to come upon me, as that seems, and uh -huh. I was just uh, thrilled to be there. I, I was eating it up. I think you got the biggest ovation outside of the players on the field of anybody in the whole, uh, the whole game. Uh -huh. I really do. I can't imagine that. Just by comparison, I would like to show you what happened when I was on the uh, video. Uh -huh. Yeah. They didn't even notice that I was there. It was just Kelly Clarkson. <laughs> They didn't even notice Carrot Top was sitting next to him. Oh. No, that's a mistake. That's a mistake. Yeah, you, yeah. You, you need to do that. Well, did you know, for instance, I'm curious, did you know that they were going to come upon you? No, I had no idea. So what happened? So when you see it on the Jumbotron, what, what's going on? Well, Kelly? my first inclination is to duck, is to hide, and yours is to take it in, perform, and really like enjoy it. And I think that shows the difference between our personality. Not, not necessarily. <laughs> You're Mr. Outgoing, but but I was happy to be there. I had all this. You know, I'm an NFL kind of. Fan. Yeah, you're a Steelers fan, I'm right? I'm a Steelers fan. Yeah. Uh, but this year, I've spent a lot of time working in, in Europe, so I've missed every game. So I was actually hungry to see every every snap. And I love that's your hometown. But I loved seeing that stadium for the first time. It's a very kind of manageable size. Yeah, it's a good stadium. I yeah. imagined that it would be kind of, you know, the fall of Rome, you know, big, some kind of big, <laughs> too big thing. But it's very, very nice, and how they manage everybody coming in. I had a great, great time. So I was happy to be amongst people and well, see everybody. Was, yeah, I think they were even happier to have you amongst them. Wow. Now, did you uh, have you been to a sporting event in Las Vegas before? <laughs> uh, yes, yes. I'm thinking of. Um, I'm a boxing. I've been a boxing fan here or there. And I went to that. I went to a couple of things, but I went to the Tyson fight where he bit Holyfield's ear. Oh, wow. You can see, I'll tell you, um, I'll bet if you look up some of that footage, you know, I'm sure you don't have it now, but I was like in the third row. So you see, when I saw a playback of it, I see me and my friend Gary Kress, who was there at the Super Bowl, believe it or not, we've been friends a long time. We were there, and um, yeah, you see us. I, Did I you was... know what was, so, because I was watching that on TV, did you know what was happening when it was happening? Uh, well, only as it developed, uh -huh. but yes, after a few seconds, it's in like the third round or something like that. I'm, it's a very exciting electric event, as you can imagine. I'm on the edge of my seat. It's a it's, 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 it's violence. It's, you know, it gets you going. And, um, <laughs> and um, so, but guy, 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 and Holyfield is kind of getting his licks, and, and, uh, and Mr. Tyson is frustrated, and... Sure enough, and sure enough, something happens. Holyfield goes, no, no, no. I see blood. I was close enough to see blood. And I go, what, what, what happened? He bit his ear. He bit his ear. I stood, I jump up, and I said, so I yelled something at him. I'm really? Yelling. Oh, yeah. No, wow. I, I sort of knew it was coming. I mean, I knew it was happening. And then he did it again, of yeah, course. Yeah, that was the bad. People forget that it was not just one ear, but he bit both ears. <laughs> Yeah. He's very OCD that way. If you bite one ear, got you got to get the other one. Yeah. What a crazy thing. That you may must... be the craziest sporting event in history. Is there, has anything weirder than that ever happened? I mean, on a, like, a, 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 like a major level, like on a big stage like that. I don't think so. And you were there to see it. 
I, I enjoyed seeing that. But how about kids? How about your kids play sports? I would, I've seen now Charlie and River at a soccer, on a soccer Your sons. Field. How old yeah. are your sons now? They're now eight, and River is, all, that's Charlie's eight, and River is uh, going to be seven. Okay. April 7th, yes. So they play soccer, they play other sports, or just soccer? They're athletic. You know, their mom is an Olympic uh, world-class athlete, gym, gymnast, and uh, they might be talented. Um, River thinks he's going to be a soccer player. I don't he know. does, yeah. yeah right? that, that's, sure. that's very rarefied. But, um, right. <laughs> but uh, no, they're pretty good. They play tennis, too. Uh huh. And they're pretty good. Who's better? Uh, Charlie River? Uh -huh. Well, Charlie is two years older. Okay, so he and has he's the advantage. kind of big. You should see he's, he's big. He's big. He's uh -huh. got muscles and his legs are good. And, uh, and River is kind of cute and scrawny. And da -da -da. But, but athletic and uh, jazzy and lively. Um, but so, 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 so Charlie being bigger is he, you know, he's dominant in many things, including Greco-Roman wrestling, which they engage in they do. formally a lot. Uh, yes. Do they ever bite each other? Is that something that enters your home? All manner of primal. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, there's biting and uh, yes. Oh, yes. I, wanted... I have to protect myself. Protect yourself at all times, like they tell the fighters, mm -hmm. uh, you know. Yeah, because they're right at that level. Yes, they are. Yeah. Yes, they are. And, yes, and sometimes they like to gang up and get dad, get him down, get him down. You know, you must know. I have to tell my son who's six years old there's no spearing, you know, which is where you actually lead with your head and go right into the... Well, they outlawed like, that. Like, this is where you came from, boy. <laughs> Oh yeah, no, I've had, I've, I've, I've kept myself from sustaining serious injury, but you know. So this has got to be a few years old then. So I wanted to yeah. ask you about um, this photograph because uh, oh, it's a cute photograph, um, but I wanted to ask you about what is happening here. You seem to be pouring orange juice in your cereal. I is am. that, was that <laughs> like a funny moment for the photo or was this um, something that you do? You know, I do not do it at the current right now. But uh, somebody reminded me that I maybe used to do that for a moment. I like my foods, and uh -huh. I like healthy eating, and so I experiment. I've always experimented with, you know, some something. You feel it's healthier to pour or to have orange juice instead of milk? Or oh, some you kind know, of... wise minds disagree, have disagreed through the decades, you uh -huh. know, if you followed it, <laughs> about, you know, milk and uh, gah, 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 gah. Uh -huh. uh, you know, currently, I, I like a nice whole milk, and I also like oat milk and different things. I love cereal. Uh -huh. I've been thrilled with, in love with cereal for What's many... your favorite cereal? Good question. Good question. <laughs> hey, you know, right now, I mostly... You know what I do? I make oatmeal. Okay. That's a very healthy thing, and I love it. I love the warmth. But if I had to have cold cereal and revisit it, not as healthy, uh, I usually go to see what the kids have. Mm -hmm. They've got Cheerios and cornflakes, and that's fine and dandy. But I went to the grocery store. Now you mentioned it. The other day, myself... And got a chance to pick. You can't send anybody and describe. I was like, let me look at everything and let me look at the flakes. And, and you know what I saw? Uh, the original Life cereal. Oh, they're still making that. Which was my huh? passion. They are making it in the box. I didn't get it because I looked at the ingredients and went, I can do better than that. I was looking for a healthy flake. I got a flake. I forget, a heritage, like something, something made of seven, seven different grains. Yeah. I had some. Okay. It's okay. Not as good as corn. Yeah, not like as good corn. as frosted. I like corn a lot, and I like oats. Does anybody remember a cereal called that I was in love with when I was seven, maybe, called Concentrate? No. no Kellogg's one. Concentrate. It was little tiny flakes. Ooh, I Don't, Guillermo's not going to help you with that. No. He has no idea. No. Yeah. I do. No. At the time, though, you know what I used to do? Pour sugar on my cereal. Yeah, I know, of course. And now the yes. kids, I help them with their cereal, and they go crazy, and they like to be subversive with the honey. Oh, they use honey on yes. this cereal. I say, I'll do it, I'll do it. Okay, no, and then they snatch it. Uh-huh. And then they go, look, look what we're doing. Ah, we're eating the whole thing of honey. You know, they go. Why is every honey. topic delightful to discuss with you? I mean, like, why, why are all the topics? Like, I feel like, <laughs> let's take a break. Jeff Goldblum is here. His movie is They Shot the Piano Player. Yeah. The very next day, I made plans to have a drink with my good friend, Joao who is one of the people I know who knows most about Brazilian music, and I often go to him for help. And he gave me the names of people that I could talk to, and he gave me their phone numbers. And as he always does, he brought me a very sweet gift of records. From the 60s, which had been out of print, impossible to find, you know. That is, they shot the piano player. Uh, 
Uh, Jeff Goldblum's voice is heard there. This is a uh, true story. Your character is fictional. Your character is not part of the true part of the story. That's right. My friend Fernando Trebo, with whom I made a movie in Spain and Paris in 1988, 89, made this, has been obsessed with, he loves music, has made Grammy winning, winning things uh, about music. He, 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 he loves, this is about Brazilian music and about a, a guy he found, a piano player named Tenorio, who was one of the pioneers and greats of Brazilian jazz. In the 50s and 60s, um, put out some albums, was influenced by... Um, Thelonious Monk and Bill Evans and uh, Duke Ellington. The, the, the beats are this new kind of samba that they're doing. It was doing. really popular like in, in American culture at oh, that time, too, right? When I was a right? kid, my yeah. parents would go on cruises and take dance lessons. And, mm -hmm. and um, Girl from Ipanema by Jobim and uh, lyrics by Vinicius de Moraes um, is the second most uh, um, recorded song in the 20th century. Girl is that right? Ipanema. Yes behind Yesterday from the Beatles. Oh. Um, so, and so I was very into it. I love that music. He, Fernando Treba, uh, um, talked to people for the last 20 years and found out about this piano player, discovered how great he was, what got people talking, recorded them. Uh, and then he was on a gig in 76 in Argentina uh, where there was for a couple of years a military dictatorship. They disappeared like 35,000 people during that time. And this guy, after a gig with Vinicius de Moreas, went in, uh, in the early morning at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, went for a sandwich, got picked up by the, by, by the people, got taken away, tortured, and finally murdered. He now finds out. Horrible, horrible. Vinicius was, was haunted by it for the rest of his life. And so this movie... Uh, not only is taken from all those interviews he did and then cut up, and I kind of play him having conversations with these people as he discovers who this guy was and rediscovers him, can kind of dis allow you to discover him again. It's a kind of beautiful movie, and it's oh. animated by a one wonderful guy. Anyway. Oh, yes. that's great. And yeah. you seem to keep in touch with, like, your old friends. You you are still in touch with a lot of your old friends, I would guess, huh? You mean like Fernando Trey? Yeah, like, and also you said your friend you took to the Super Bowl who was with you at the boxing match. I mean, these are long-term relationships. Yes, that's true. I, yeah. I don't know if I have as devoted a circle as you do. Well, no one does, but yeah, but... <laughs> I don't know. But it a couple like of people, Gary pretty... Crest is fantastic, yes. Oh, boy, we've done, had many adventures together. We went on the Concord together. You did? Yes. Wow, yes. really? What year was that? I don't know. Uh huh. I don't know. You, what was things. that like, the Concord? I've always wondered what that was like. Fast, fast. Yeah, right. We went from, where did we go? We went from uh, London to New York or something, you know. How fast was it? What, how fast was that trip? You're talking to the wrong guy. I'm not uh -huh. a scientist or a. Or a no. <laughs> but it was fast. I think we went, for, you know, what usually takes. Five, you know, five hours was a couple hours. Or Is it too fast almost? Like you want to spend a little more time on the plane? Uh, I don't know. I, uh -huh. You know, it's, it's fine. You can't be peevish about how much time you spend on a plane because uh -huh. we could be 100 years ago with a blink of an eye and be in a Conest Conestoga wagon yes, or something could. for months and months ago or a, or a ship. So when I say, and I do, oh, when is this going to end? Uh-huh. That's what's going on. I try to have perspective about it, but so I, 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 ne I would never complain that it's too fast. I, I wouldn't mind like the fly character in the fly te yeah. teleporting myself and going, okay, take me. Well, I want to be in the Waldorf Astoria Hotel uh, right now, and then I, we go like that. But didn't things go badly in the fly? <laughs> yes. Now that, now that I think of it, yeah. yes, that's that. <laughs> Seems like if there's a movie you're going to wish for, that yeah. maybe is not the one. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> but it's great. It's always great to see you. Thank you so much for uh, for coming. Yes, it's uh, you, always man. a delight. Jeff Goldblum, everybody. <laughs> see his movie. It's called They Shot the Piano Player. It opens in New York and L.A. on Friday. We'll be back with...